That's why, ever since I decided on this career, I have always been active, ate as clean as possible, and took my vitamins every single day. Even so, after hitting 50, my body began to feel weak. I was getting headaches, I was feeling tired all the time, and sometimes I had difficulty breathing after just a couple of stairs. Small tasks like fixing a chair or going shopping not only took me longer, but also seemed a lot harder than they used to. What bothered me the most was that I could no longer do massages all day long. I had to cut the number of clients per day. Of course, I blamed everything on my age. After all, I was no spring chicken anymore, right? Little did I know back then that my age had absolutely nothing to do with it. A few weeks after my 54th birthday, everything took a turn for the worse. It all started at our daughter's wedding party. My wife and I were extremely excited and at the same time nervous as our little baby girl was just getting married at only 23 to Ian, an American-Korean chemistry professor. As you can imagine, a lot of things had to be done before the reception. I had to make sure the cake arrived in perfect condition at the right place and time and take care of the guests answering questions or taking phone calls. Even though it wasn't such a hard job, from time to time I got dizzy and had to stop and catch my breath. I admired Yang Ho, my future son-in-law's grandfather, who at 80 years old moved furniture around and helped carry things with the ease of a teenager. I remember thinking that South Koreans must have some pretty strong genes, given the fact that he was way healthier than me, even though he was 30 years older. Now, the wedding ceremony was one of the most touching moments I've ever witnessed. The brides and grooms of vows just brought everyone to tears. I was so happy for my daughter, so enchanted by how beautiful she looked in her long white dress that I would never have imagined the most horrifying experience was just around the corner. You see, as the bride's father, I was supposed to make a toast at the dinner table. I was incredibly nervous, I'm not going to lie to you. When the moment finally arrived, all eyes were on me. And now the bride's father will make a toast, the MC announced. My hands got really cold and sweaty. I could feel the tie getting tighter and tighter around my neck. Somehow, I managed to unfold the piece of paper where I had everything written down and, and stood up. But the moment I stood up from my chair, my vision got cloudy. All I could see were floaters. Then an excruciating migraine hit me like a shovel. I felt a painful pulse inside my head like someone was using my skull as a drum. Then I heard a pop. The next second, I went blind in my left eye. I couldn't understand what was happening. A few seconds later, weakness took over my body and I crashed to the floor. Dad, oh my God, Dad, what's wrong? I heard my daughter's terrified cries like it was coming from far, far away. I could not speak nor move for that matter. I was barely conscious. Call 911, I heard my son-in-law's voice. Everyone step away from him, said Yong Ho, the Korean grandfather. Then he approached me. Can you hear me, Mr. John? Breathe exactly as I tell you and you will be good, okay? He continued. I did exactly that following his instructions, and with every breath, I felt my chest lighter and lighter, my pain fading away. Even to this day, I am convinced that if it weren't for him and his breathing exercise, I'd be dead by now. This exercise that I'm going to reveal to you soon was what kept me alive until the ambulance came. At the hospital, they gave me the most horrifying news. Mr. Myers, you had a stroke caused by high blood pressure. Unfortunately, you'll never be able to see again with your left eye. But you should count your lucky stars that you're alive. What? High blood pressure? I had high blood pressure? When did this happen? And how could I lose my sight in just one second? What did they mean there was nothing they could do about it? Could I have done something to prevent it? My head was exploding from all the questions and the doctors just shrug their shoulders. They don't call it the silent killer for nothing, one of the nurses said. I thought things couldn't get worse until I tried to get out of bed. My left side 
from my arm to my back and leg felt heavy, numb, and slow. I could barely move on my own. It took tremendous willpower to get to the toilet. As it turned out, my nerves were also damaged, and if everything worked well and I was lucky enough, I would partially recover in four to five months. I felt like a cripple, and I was scared out of my wits. I truly hope no one will ever go through what I've been through. That's why, before I get to the second part of my story, there's a crucial thing that I want you to keep in mind. A simple test that could save you or your loved ones from the terrible complications of high blood pressure. All you have to do is answer one simple question. Do you often feel the need to take a deep breath because you feel like the air is just not enough? If so, you need to check your blood pressure and see if you need immediate medical attention. And you'll see in a second why the way you breathe is a clear sign of dangerous and potentially fatal blood pressure levels. Now, after I got out of the hospital, as you can imagine, the doctor gave me a fistful of pills that made me incredibly sick. For him, I was just another patient. He didn't really care what was best for me. You might know that when it comes to high blood pressure, there is no one-size-fits-all med scheme, and you basically turn into your doc's lab rat before they get to the right dosage for you, if ever. The side effects squeezed the life out of me. I couldn't sleep. I was always dizzy and nauseous, and I frequently had chest pain. One time, I even lost consciousness and fell in the middle of the street. Every morning I woke up coughing. It was like I had gotten 20 years older in one month. And no wonder I was having such a hard time. According to the National Institute of Health, the NIH, the commonly prescribed blood pressure drugs don't work for 52% of the people who take them. Then I was supposed to follow a diet so restrictive that I lost my appetite altogether. I remember sitting for hours trying to convince myself to have just a little bite of the saltless spinach. I also tried herbal supplements, teas, acupuncture, and even meditation hoping for a faster recovery. But aside from some temporary relief, those methods seemed far from a long-term solution, at least for me. They could barely help me cope with the side effects of the meds. I mean, how could I ever get well if the pills that were supposed to treat me made me even sicker than I'd ever been? Adding to this, after the stroke, I basically had to relearn how to walk and move around because the left side of my body was still damaged. I was a mess. My wife had to literally carry me around for five straight months before I could even take a shower by myself. Seeing the desperate, exhausted look on her face every time she had to help me get dressed shattered me to pieces. And even though my condition was slowly getting better and I was trying to act normal like a true husband would do, one evening she straight up refused to make love with me. She was too afraid I would get a stroke while in bed with her. It was like she took my manhood away. To this day, it pains me to even think about it. But I, I cannot blame her because, you see, she was right to do so. As the real tragedy was that despite my best efforts, every doctor visit ended the same way. My blood pressure was still high, and I was still at risk of having a heart episode or going blind in my second eye this time, not being able to see anything ever again. The thought of me becoming a burden to my wife for life was unbearable. I was supposed to protect and support her and, and our family, not to make her retirement years a living hell. Plus, she wasn't getting any younger either. If something would have happened to her, how could our daughter take care of both of us? What choice did she really have now with the baby on the way other than putting me or her in a retirement home? During all this agony, the only thing that kept me sane and functioning was the South Korean breathing exercise. Whenever I felt my blood pressure was rising, I would breathe just like Yong Ho had shown me and I would feel like a weight had been lifted off my chest. I couldn't stop thinking, why did something so simple work so well? Why did it manage to 
calm my body better than any blood pressure meds or treatments. So one day, tired of ruminating bad thoughts, I opened my laptop and decided to research everything about breathing exercises and blood pressure. Was there a connection between the way you breathe and high blood pressure? So I began spending a lot of late night digging through the internet, reading hundreds of articles and studies on medical databases. When I had better days, I even went to the National Library of Medicine and devoured every book I could find until one day I came across the one study that turned my luck around. What caught my attention was the fact that this was an independent experiment, meaning the breakthrough was funded by a community of common folks who had no other hidden interest than just to find real answers and solutions that could really help them get back to their normal lives. Here's what it said. Your high blood pressure is caused by your body thinking you are suffocating or not getting enough air. Researchers at Bristol University have recently discovered a tiny organ that tells your body how much air you are supposed to take in on every single breath. This organ, which doctors call the carotid body, is no bigger than a grain of rice and is found in your neck between two major arteries that feed blood to the brain. The small organ that not many people have heard of plays a really big role in keeping you alive. You see, its main function is to sniff blood oxygen levels and, like an oxygen reader, to trigger an alarm warning when these are below the normal level. So what it does is to signal the brain to adjust the breathing rate